boundaries are drawn on what's acceptable to say on Israel and what is not acceptable to say. It's really hard to engage with something that you've been taught to love, and then you learn that it's more complicated than you thought. I feel uncomfortable with how I feel about Israel. Regardless of the fact that I do have conflicting feelings about Israel, I do feel like it is a second home to me. I'm really disappointed in Israel. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just sad. I really hope that one day, not only the Jews can call Israel home, but many other people can. One of the major tenets of the Jewish faith is we should seek justice and pursue it. And I think that the state of Israel needs to, to take that more to heart. Israel and social justice. These two issues deeply engage and spark action in the Jewish community. Yet these same two issues are kept apart in many Jewish institutions, and for many of us, are also kept apart in our own lives and in our own activism. Over the next few minutes, you will hear from seven young Jewish activists who have been asked to address Israel and social justice together. They discuss wrestling with these issues, their passion for good work, their connection to Israel, and their hopes for the future. We hope their thoughts will add to today's conversation. Welcome to Love, Hate, and the Jewish State, a conversation on Israel and social justice. I consider myself a Zionist. That doesn't mean that I believe that Israel, in the, in the form that it exists, is, is the Israel that I would um, root for. The words Antifada, the words occupation, the words um, Israel and Palestinian and terrorist and, and suicide bombing were already flowing through my head and I, and I realized I didn't really have much of a gauge on the issue. You know, the main ideas of labor Zionism of really trying to build an ideal society that's based on a set of values that everyone is linked together in enacting those values is really inspiring to me. I would have thought that Israel would have a more open equality attitude towards towards everyone, but it does not always seem to be the case. My uh, conflicts about Israel are kind of at odds sometimes with the beauty I see in having a cultural home. I don't know what to think. I feel like I have different views and they're each in themselves independently valid and they're like sitting on a counter like ingredients and I haven't been able to combine the flavors to make anything that makes sense. Even though I, I feel I have a social justice perspective, I think within this sort of social justice movement, there are people who want Israel to act differently because it's Jewish, and that's exhausting. But what's not safe for me to talk about is whether or not Jews are mistreating non-Jews in their midst, or to what extent Jewish Israelis bear, now bear the responsibility of making reparations or sacrifices to somehow mitigate that damage. I was not interested in just making money for money's sake or having a job for the sake of having a job, but, but actually doing something with the work that I did to make the world a better place, which is was something that I felt that was part of certain Jewish communities and, and I felt very drawn to that. So I put together this Middle East Peace Summit, which is basically like a simulation for the local high school students. And you know, each high school student is representing a different uh, country in the Middle East and we present them different scenarios and um, they have to come together and try to like find some type of peaceful solutions. I think the people who are valued in the Jewish community are the ones who are serving the Jews most of the time. I'm really disappointed in Israel and in all of us because it's so difficult to watch one severe instance of oppression in the world lead to more oppression. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just sad. Who doesn't have relatives? All Jews have relatives. We're all family. Jews are Jews. Does she know Hebrew? Yiddish. Or Yiddish? 
No, only Russian. I would like to convey a message of tolerance. I would tell them to stop listening to me and to turn to their neighbor and talk to their neighbor. Well, for the Jews who already get using political power effectively, I would want to engage them on other issues that are also compelling to us as a Jewish community. I don't know that the, you know, what my vision of the world to come would include a state that is dedicated to one group of people. Right now in the world, I, I understand why that might be a necessity, though. I think if I had the opportunity to talk to the entire entire Jewish community or a segment of the entire Jewish community, I would say that we should have an open dialogue about these things and we should not be afraid to have a critical eye. Why is this conversation so hard? How do we engage and avoid these topics? Why do our communities seem to separate them? Are they opposing worldviews? When and how do they coincide? If we could imagine our ideal Jewish community, well, do you want to go to Israel? What would it look like?